Here's why I have Florida State to win the 2024 ACC. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into Locked On Seminoles. I am your host, Brian Smith. Thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. This show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 winning bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash Locked On to get started. Speaking of getting started, here is today's theme. Going to talk about ACC predictions, where I think Florida State and several other teams are going to rank, and why. Going to break down the schedules. That's a major factor. Going to talk a little depth chart. Going to talk about depth, recruiting, a little bit of everything. But again, the number one theme is what's the pecking order? I'm going to do my top five. And just up front, this is a much deeper ACC, in my opinion, than a lot of other years because of the quarterback play. You've got guys coming into the league. Like NC State picked up another veteran quarterback. Virginia's going to be better at quarterback. Virginia Tech's got drones who's back. Florida State got DJ Uwe Ungle. They, yeah, they lost Jordan Travis, but you know they got him. Cam Ward's at Miami. This is a really good league at quarterback. So going to be a lot of battles. It'll just be fun in general to check it out. But here are a few things to talk about in particular. For Florida State to get to the top, these are the categories that I think they need to work on the most. And again, I know they went undefeated in the regular season last year, and I know they won the ACC title game, but they had some elite playmakers that they are losing. If they're going to win the league, and I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, they're my pick, but if they're going to do it, these areas, among others, need to go up. These are top of the board for me, like surprising to a certain degree in a couple of categories. I'm curious on your take. If you want to comment on YouTube or Make any thoughts up for your own conversation. A few of these stats for your Florida State buddies might surprise them. So these are the categories they got to improve for them to get there. And then we'll talk about the pecking order. Number one, last year, they averaged 6.1 penalties per game. That's too many. They were 73rd in the nation. A team as well coached as Florida State is should not be 73rd in the nation. They shouldn't be. And like I know part of that's aggression. Uh, maybe a guy getting a DB, you know, holding or going for the ball or something. Some of those are like that, but false starts and holding penalties on offense are more of what I'm talking about. The mental errors with pre-snap penalties, it's got to go away. 73rd in the nation. There's no hiding that. Either you did or you didn't. 73rd in the nation. That's unacceptable. Number two, Florida State's pass defense, in my opinion, from top to bottom, like if they were just to focus, we're going to be a pass defense today. They really focus on our DBs or polar opposite. We're going to sick our, our front four after you do a lot of stunts, do a lot of trickeration, or we're going to blitz. They can do any of the three last year's unit, and they'll probably be able to do the same thing this year. That being the case, here's a stat that I was not aware of. They, they gave up a ton of plays over 20 yards, 175 plays in that realm. And – it's really funny to me because if you think about Florida State, yeah, they were aggressive. They would play man. Um, they did a lot of things that really just showed you how much confidence they had in their players, which I love. But at the end of the day, they just didn't do that good in that area. There are, excuse me, 59, 175 was 10 plus yard plays, 59 of them. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, did they really give up that many? Now, I know some of them were in garbage time. Whatever. I get it. But that's still too many. And for the experience they have in the secondary, especially as much praise as I've given them here lately, that number is part of it. The only thing I can say with that is they were really thin at linebacker last year, really good with the starters, but they didn't rotate a lot. I think that plays into it. They'll have a little less fatigue this year. They got a little more depth at linebacker, so that should help. Back to offense. This one is somewhat surprising, but there is a caveat to it. Third down conversions. If you were to guess right now, before I throw out the numbers, the percentage, et cetera. Would you think with Jordan Travis and those receivers, et cetera, that Florida State was a top 20 or at least a top 40 offense on third down conversions, just sheer number percentage? My answer is yes. But according to the numbers, it is nowhere near that. They were 66 of 182 in third downs. That is 36.3%. 
And to be really honest with you, I think the main reason it wasn't as it wasn't as good as it should be. They took a lot of shots on first and second down, which I'm good with, but that still puts you in a bad situation in regards to how you go out and you try to convert third down. I mean, it's just third and eight is not friendly. I don't care if you got Jordan Travis and all the guys in the world. Third and eight pretty much eliminates the run game unless you just got an electric play. Uh, they were they were 94th in that category, which is horrendous. But they were one of the best big play offenses in the country too. So it plays off of it. This year, you're losing your two best receivers and Jaheim Bell. You need to be a lot better at third downs, which I think the play calling will emphasize that. They'll be a little more conservative on first and second down, but they'll also be in more manageable, more man like third and three, third and fours than they were last year. That's just my opinion. Uh, finally, the thing offensively, again, that they need to eliminate part of this kind of like the last category, it's subjective because Florida State was so banged up with either guys out of the lineup on offensive line or e even just out of the lineup altogether. They changed the lineups or Mo Smith played hurt, et cetera. I think that hindered the running game quite a bit. And that also caused a lot of problems with tackles for loss. They had a, obviously really good running backs. They still had 73 tackles for loss, gave up 5.2 for a contest. That's not acceptable at Florida State or any major power five program. I think that's something they're going to have to get better at or they're going to be in a lot of trouble. You're not going to win college football games against elite teams unless you're really good at grinding out drives, which is what third downs are about, or you're a traditionally elite big play team you know, that's got a whole bunch of guys. Right now, Malik Benson's the only one that's proven anything, and that's just in spring ball. Like, he wasn't a dude at Bama. We're assuming they're going to be a big play, and I, I think that's going to be their route, but I can't imagine it's going to be as consistent as last year because that's still one guy, and Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson are not walking back in the door. So they need to be more consistent with giving up fewer of those so you can be in those manageable third downs that we talked about in a minute ago. If you're not, Close games become close losses. Uh, chances to go to the playoff go out the window. They should be better at it. They've got a ton of experience back. They've got some good running back. Like Rodell went come in from Alabama. There's no reason they shouldn't eliminate at least five to ten of those, especially in big games like Miami, Florida, Notre Dame, et cetera. You can't give up negative yardage plays to those teams because they have talented defenses. Anyway. You can't have any mental errors, et cetera, any freebies. And some of them were. Last year, they shot themselves in the foot too often and got themselves in, in some bad spots. A Clemson game in particular, they ran for 22 yards. That's terrible. But they still found a way to win because of those big plays and, and a key turnover turned to a touchdown by Kalen DeWoach. Coming up next, I'm going to give my actual predictions, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about what I just went over to give you those and where Florida State stands. That's next here on Locked on Simmons. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Next, with these four categories that I just mentioned, which one do I think is most likely for Florida State to alleviate? I, I think it's penalties. Like I just, th those drive me nuts. I, I talked to a lot of coaches, so maybe I just think through their wins too much, high school, college, whatever. Maybe I just do that. But again, I just want to throw this number out. They averaged 6.1 per game last year. Some of them are aggressive penalties, but I think they'll be lowered. I'm hoping that an experienced team like Florida State, I mean, think about the lineup. It's really, really experienced on both sides of the ball, to be honest. And that'll translate a little bit to special teams as well, that they can be in the top five in fewest penalties, at least in the ACC. Nationally, I mean, they should be top 30 with their experience. They should. If they're not, that's on them. That's a player thing. That's not a coach thing because a lot of this is pre-snap stuff, and a lot of it is just mental and being prepared. You're an adult. If you're starting at Florida State, you're not an 18 year old. They're not starting 18 year olds. Okay. These are 20 to 23 year olds. That's on players. That needs to change. With that, here are my predictions. I'm going to go five to one in the league, give a little background to each. At number five, I've got Virginia Tech going five and three and nine and three overall. 
Their schedule is not terrible. And I'm telling you, the drones kid that I've mentioned a few times here on the show recently, the quarterback, really mobile, over 800 yards last year, can scoot. He's 230 plus pounds. So he will truck you. And he's pretty accurate. They've got some good receivers. They've got three, four guys that can get it to at least. They got a couple other guys coming up the ranks. They're going to give teams some fits. Florida State or anybody else that plays them at any point, ACC title game, whatever, takes them lightly, could be in trouble. Um, to be honest with you, just look at it. I've got Florida State, or excuse me, Virginia Tech schedule up right now. Florida State doesn't play them in the regular season. Virginia Tech goes to Miami. That's Miami's first uh, ACC game. That could be interesting right there. Don't be shocked if Virginia Tech wins that game. They got Clemson at home. They don't have a tough schedule. Like they don't play Florida State. They don't play Louisville. They could go 10 to 2. Like it'd be kind of a smoke and mirrors. Like in the SEC, would they go to? No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't come close. But I, I think that they're a team that's going to surprise some people. Before I go any further, I think that there's going to be a log jam between like seven and two. There might be one game that separates number seven from number two. Like really that much. I think the bottom of the league is going to be really bad. But that's typical. Uh, there's a few teams like Thomas Castellanos at Boston College. He's really good. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think they got the horses. And I think their lack of recruiting the last few years is going to make them, especially in the back half of the season, kind of fall off. And that's kind of the theme. Georgia Tech, they not enough guys on defense. They'll score. They might beat somebody. But are they going to be the most difficult? Nah, probably not. Louisville is one of the teams that I think will end up at 6-2. and two, And – I think they're going to be good, but out of the three teams that I have six and two, I think they will be the least productive for two reasons. One, too many transfers to have cohesiveness. I don't think they're a playoff contender slash team that could do anything. In the play. If they make it, they would get beat pretty quickly. And I also don't think it's a team that has enough horses to scare teams and like change their offense and defensive philosophies beyond just a couple of guys. Now, a lot of the, the defensive linemen he beat. But they don't have enough guys. They got a bunch of good players, but not enough to change what you're going to go out and scheme against. Prove me wrong. Got a couple of decent players on offense that probably don't get enough respect, receivers and skill guys like that. And Brom's a good coach, but they're still just a notch below where they need to be to be consistent. And after they go to the ACC title game last year, they're not sneaking up on anybody. Everybody will know them. Everybody will get their 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 players up, and Louisville will take everybody's best shot. That's going to be difficult. Miami, I've got them at six and two out of all the teams in the league that have a legit shot to win the league or top talent, however you want to say it, they have the easiest schedule. There's no doubt in my mind they have the easiest schedule. Uh, Miami, I don't know if I've got it pulled up here, but Miami's schedule is uh, much, much easier than people think. Florida on the road, that's not a conference game, but then they got A&M, Florida A&M, Ball State at home. They play at South Florida. I mean, if they lose that, then their season's going in the tank. Virginia Tech at home is, is somewhat difficult, but like they get the road game at Louisville, but they get Florida State at home. They got Duke. Georgia Tech's on the road, but Georgia Tech's just not great. Wake Forest and Syracuse to close out the year. I mean, three out of their last four, I don't think, are really bowl teams. And Georgia Tech may not be. I mean, they've got more depth than most of those squads. If they don't win at least nine games, there's something really wrong. And I would imagine Cristobal would be on the hot seat. The other team, and this won't surprise anybody, is Clemson. I like Clemson this year, and I think their schedule is very manageable, but it's not perfect. Why in the world? I mean, I like it. They're playing Georgia to open the season. I assume that's at Mercedes-Benz in Atlanta. They got NC State at home on the 21st. That's after a bye, after App State. That's a, that's a nice way to set that up at home. They go to Stanford or no, excuse me, they host Stanford and then go to Florida State. So that's a three-game stretch that's kind of weird because you got NC State at home, big, it's a rivalry game, you got to go and play Stanford, a team that you're probably not going to take all that serious. They were terrible last year, 3-9. and And then you've got to travel to Tallahassee on the 5th of October. That's that's a really big game, probably the biggest game in the league by a mile. But then they also have right after that, they've got to go to Wake Forest, host Virginia, and then they host Louisville, host Virginia, or go to Virginia Tech. Pittsburgh's terrible, Citadel, and then South Carolina. Like, they don't have anybody besides Florida State. You go, ah, that team's just way better than them. Like, it's the only other game, but two games early in the season, they got Georgia and Florida State. That is, those are rough. Um, 
I, I think they'll lose to Florida State and one other, but they may not like their schedule is on the back end is pretty light. They have one of the weakest November schedules. They didn't play Louisville that first weekend in November. It'd be one of the weakest in all of college football. Now, as for Florida State, I'm obviously picking them to win the league. I got them 10 and 2 overall, 7 and 1 in the ACC. I don't know which game they will lose, but if I had to guess, it would like the Miami game is possible. Um, maybe it's it's Clemson, but if they don't like I don't think Florida State's an elite team this year. They're really good, but there's no game I go, man, that's an L. I mean, that's that's just flat out an L. Um, I mean, North Carolina at home before Notre Dame, so at least they don't play a difficult game before they play at Notre Dame, but that's not a conference game. I think Notre Dame is definitively the most difficult game on the schedule. I'll talk about that here in a minute. But besides Clemson and Miami, there's nobody else on the schedule that you go, wow, that game, is, they're in trouble there. Could Florida State go 11-1 and one or something like that? It's possible. But they also have Georgia Tech to start the year overseas. Boston College gave them fits last year, although I think Florida State at home, especially after last year, will take them more serious. The game I'm really worried about is Memphis at home because they're going to look past them because it's Memphis. They got Cal at home. And then the road trip to SMU. That is a spoiler game. I, I hate the timing of the SMU game. It's on the road against Preston Stone and SMU is going to they're going to throw every trick thing they can at him, and they got a quarterback that can really sling it. He's an NFL player, so that's probably going to be a little more difficult than most think. But after that, the only games that you look at and, and you're like, oh, man, there's similar talent. Clemson, obviously. Florida State plays at Miami, and Florida State plays in Notre Dame. I know Ford is good at the end of the year. I'm just I'm going to go into their schedule here in a second. But I think Billy Napier will be fired by then, and I think that game will be a runaway. I don't think there's much chance Florida, and I, I've got the, this is hilarious. I'm just going to bring it up, that Florida's going to be involved in that game, like mentally, because I think Billy will be fired by that point. Listen to the last five games Florida has to end the 2024 season. This is really, really difficult. Georgia in Jacksonville, neutral site, at Texas, home to LSU, home to Ole Miss, at Florida State. From that schedule, based on what I know about the rosters, LSU is the most likely win. A, it's at home, and B, their secondary is atrocious. But still, if LSU is the easiest of a five-game stretch, you're in trouble. By the end of the Ole Miss game, Ole Miss will be one of the most improved teams in college football, at least from a roster standpoint. Florida State's going to get a team that's wore out mentally and physically when the Florida Gators show up to Tallahassee. Just going to say that now. So if Florida State doesn't win that game, that's going to be on them. And that's just kind of how I see it. So take that for what it's worth. Um, we're going to come back here in a second and talk about the five most difficult games for Florida State. I rank those as well. I kind of go back and forth on which ones are the most likely to lose, but there are a couple of points I want to make. That's what, That's next here on Locked on Seminoles. Five games on Florida State's schedule to give me some pause among others, okay? I'm going to rank these five down to one. First is Georgia Tech, that number five, August 24th. It's in Ireland, first game of the year against a team that can really score. They led the league in touchdown passes last year, and they also stunk at turning the ball over. They're Jekyll and Hyde from play to play. But it's a year later in the system, and if Florida State does not take them serious, yes, they could lose that game. Plus, it's DJ's first game. Anything can happen. Do I think it's likely I give Georgia Tech about a 15% chance of winning that? That may be 20. But Florida State has the more talented team, and, and quite honestly, it's a lot more depth. It's like the defensive starters, it's not comparable. And unless they turn it over, they should not lose this game. They should be able to bludgeon Georgia Tech in the second half. That's just how I see it. Number four, this is a game I just mentioned a few moments ago. At SMU, I'm telling you, don't take that game lightly. Playing any game on the road in a conference situation against a guy that's going to get drafted or at least go to NFL camp at quarterback is a recipe for disaster. Hate that kind of situation. And on, on top of it, that game in particular is the 28th of September. On October 5th, the next weekend, they host Clemson. 
You can tell kids a million things. You can threaten them. You can do whatever you want. Mike Norvell and his staff will not even remotely have his team's attention SMU week. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they tell tell you on TV. Well, it's an experience. College kids today look at big games. They really struggle with teams that don't have name recognition, and SMU does not. That is a recipe for disaster. If Florida State's down 14-3 to after the first quarter in that game, it would not shock me. Now, maybe that would get them going, but those kinds of games happen. You're going to have to find a way to win a clunker if you're going to win a conference championship. Maybe SMU is their clunker that they win. Just saying. Number three, I've got Clemson at home as that game. I went back and forth between it and Miami, but Miami's on the road. Clemson's a team that I think is really good. Probably the most important game of the year in the ACC. Two best teams, but at the same time, they're at home. This is a game where you can kind of turn the tide in the series. Last year, you won a third place. If you beat them a second year in a row, and obviously you're going to be up for Clemson, that sets a trend. I think that Cade Klubnick will be better this year. They've got some good receivers. Uh, They've got a good running back. They're decent up front. Their defense will be salty. But it's at home. This is a game you just have to find a way to win. It's not like you're going to go out and win 31-3. to It's not likely. Uh, They'd have to turn it over five times to make that happen. And to that point, Clemson will turn it over less this year with Klubnick going from his sophomore to junior year. And finally, this is a redemption game for DJ. I hope that he doesn't try to make too many plays because, remember, Klubnick replaced him. A little irony there. Just throwing it out. Play your game. Don't try to compete against the other guy. You're playing against their defense, not the other team's quarterback. Number two, Miami. It's at Miami. This is not a rocket science thing. They're very talented. I know they're aloof. Who knows what's going to happen any given week with Miami. They could beat a team 41 to 10, 41 to 10 or lose to that same team 28-21. Don't take Miami lightly. I know it's down there. It'll be packed. It'll be crazy. But this is a team that Florida State, like I mentioned earlier, if they don't have penalties, they've got a veteran quarterback, and they've got a situation with the offensive line and all that, they should be in the game until late in the game. No reason to believe they wouldn't be. So play your game, and you've got a coach that's obviously been historically better on game day than what they have in in Coral Gable. So that's a game you can win. The most difficult game to me, and I don't think it's close, it's the timing, et cetera, is the Notre Dame game because it's November 9th. I've mentioned that about a half dozen times on this show before today. That's not changing. The weather in that game is paramount. If it is wet and or cold that day, it is a humongous advantage to Notre Dame. Seven to 10 point kind of deal. And I'm not kidding. Either you're born in the North and you're used to that stuff, especially receivers and DBs, or you are not. It is not definable how important that is. On November 9th in South Bend, it could be 60 or it could be 16. There is no telling. It is like literally it could be 55 degrees on Friday and the next day it could be 31 and raining sideways. Florida State can't have that. And Notre Dame's a lineman kind of team, especially defense. They are loaded on defense, their front seven. That ought to be a great game in the trenches. Uh, Notre Dame's offensive tackles are the question mark of the team. They are loaded everywhere else. I think that is a top 10 matchup and one of the best games in all of college football. So with that, I'm going to wrap up today's show. Um, It should be a pretty good schedule for Florida State, though. It's balanced. It's not unfair. They got some big games, Clemson, Miami, SMU, Notre Dame, et cetera. I think it's a good schedule, and it's one to look forward to. I'd like to hear what you think Florida State's record will be. Again, I've got them 7-1 in the ACC, 10-2 and overall. That's my guess to lose either to Clemson or Miami in the ACC and win the outright league in the regular season. I have no idea who they're going to even play in the ACC title game, so I'll leave that stuff out. But that's my prediction. I'd like to hear what yours is. But anyway, thank you very much. This has been Locked on Seminoles. Everybody have a great day.